Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. What's up, friends? It has been ages. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. How is everybody doing on this Saturday? The Shabbat Shalom or wherever you are watching from. What's up, friends? Comment below where you are watching from. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here, one of your favorite prophetic voices. I've missed all of you. I've missed you, my Facebook social media family. We have been on the move. We have been on the run. I apologize. I've been quite absent from social media. But blessings, friends. Comment below where you are watching from. I am broadcasting live here from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And we just finished three days of conference. And we still do have some of our guests here. But God is good. I have been so so busy so so busy so i want to give you an update and i want to talk about the art of tearing the art of tearing the art of tearing is uh it is an ancient art and it is a historical uh realm it's it's, it's an impartation really but i believe god wants us to catch the art of tearing amen so praise god i see south africa i see liberia UK, Houston earlier, Georgia. Friends are saying it's good to see you. It's good to see you too. I've missed all of you. Hello there, Anthony Carabillo. Shakaraviti is at Vermont. Glory. Busy is good. It is. Sometimes too busy is not good, however. And I'll talk about that too. South Africa in the house. Bronx, New York. Glory. I'm so happy to see my South African friends and family. God bless you. Shout out, Baba Amy. Good to see you. Yeah. In fact, I was just talking about Lebanon, PA, uh, on a call I was on right before this. Hello there, Natalie. Good to see you. South Africa in the house. Rio Rancho. God bless you. Glory to God. Ata Marie. Where's that? Wyoming in the house. Michigan. Hey there, Prophet Tim. HP. Pretoria. Glory. Shakarababa. South Africa coming in strong. South Africa. Glory to God. Friends, why don't you give us a like, a heart, and a share. Share this on your wall. Tag somebody. Praise God. And let them know that the man of God, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, is in the house. Samoa. Yes, I will see you in July in the nation, the island nation of Samoa. Sitabasata. New Zealand in the house. I would also like to maybe stop by New Zealand on routes or in return from Samoa. But wonderful. We got Germany. God bless you. Thank you, Karen. Says, we miss you. I missed you guys too. Trust me. I've been MIA. This has literally been the longest I've been away from Facebook and social media in a long time. Probably over a year, really. Brisbane, Australia. Bless you. Alberta, Canada. Shalom. Zebakara brata. Shatara brota. Today I want to talk about the art of tearing. Amen. The art of tearing. And uh, this is going to be a rich word, a blessed word. But continue to build up the room. Help us to get the word out, the notifications out. Glory. Prophet Tim, can or if you could just share this in our Open Heavens World Facebook group, please. Thank you. Oklahoma. Apostle Robert, good to see you, man. I got Alaska in the house. I've always been, I've been praying to go into Alaska for many years as well. I know I would love to come back. I might come to South Africa at the end of this year. Let's see. Let's see. Jababa Sotorobrota. Well, I just got off the phone with a good friend. Uh, and they invited me. Oh, Hong Kong, God bless you. I have not been to Hong Kong in a few years. South Carolina in the house. I have not uh I, I just got off the phone right now with a dear friend. And this gentleman opened up a door for me to go to Brazil. And I'm very happy about that. So let's see what the Lord does. Because I've been praying into the nation and the people of Brazil. And even the whole continent of South America for many years. But I believe now is the time. Somebody say now is the time. And if you've been following me on my journey, you, you probably understand my journey. Even when it comes, even when it came over to Korea that I've been waiting for the right door for Korea, the right and the effectual door. 
Who here knows that God can open a door, but also so can man. And so can even the devil. The enemy can also open up an Ishmael door for you as well. And that's why we need to be aware of the doors, the alignments, the assignments, the people that we connect with. Because some can be Ishmael connections, Judas doors, Judas connections, where wolves in sheep's clothing are trying to take advantage of you and use and abuse and use and abuse and really destroy the mantle, tear apart the mantle. And of course, if it's truly from God, uh, amen, it'll truly be protected, absolutely. Uh, however, we must not open up doors to our own lives, ministries, families, to unnecessary warfare. Too many people are needless casualties of war. Of course, that is Prophet John Paul Jackson's famous book. But today I want to talk about, and it's 111 here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Today I want to talk about the art of tearing, the art of tearing. So much to amen. And continue to comment below where you are watching from. Comment below where you're watching from. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. I'm telling you, I've had the most busy schedule, beginning of the year schedule uh, in a long time, maybe in my life, and even more than I like, honestly. But that really is my fault, in a sense, for uh, scheduling too much, scheduling too much. And uh, maybe I'll get into that in a little bit as well. But praise God, because who here knows that revival comes suddenly. And I want you to make room for your suddenly. I want you, and I don't know if you feel it, but I feel the glory and the authority of God in this broadcast already. But we must make room for suddenlies. We must not be too busy. We must not be too scheduled. We must not have our lives so set in place that we miss out on a suddenly or we miss out on a move of God. We miss out on a surprise that God has. Remember, uh, all of a sudden, the apostle Philip was going in one direction. Boom, the Lord translated him instantly and suddenly to a whole nother region. So you and I, we need to, of course, be led by the Lord in everything we do, whether it's making schedules and appointments, because you can never honestly build without structure and schedule and planning. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. But you must always, and I'm preaching to myself, we must always plan for Shabbats, okay? Because the Shabbat realm, the Sabbath realm, the sabbatical realm is the realm of suddenlies. Amen. Now it's good to see you, friends. Ethiopia, praise God. Now I prophesy suddenlies in your life. I prophesy the glory realm of God to break out in your life. I feel such a fresh fire. I've missed all of you. I have not seen you on Facebook Live, on social media world, probably in a couple weeks. And it feels like ages. Because you know, the Bible says one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. And because so much happens in one day, because so much happens in one day, and you have to be, I want you to hear this. I'm kind of, I'm kind of revelating or I'm doing my prophetic rambling right now because I have not seen you in a while. But because so much happens in one day, yes, we live in the future, but we also must live in the present. Because God, hear me now, God is the God. He's the one who lives in the realm of glory or the realm of eternity. And what is the realm of glory and the eternal glory? The realm of eternal glory is he was and is and is to come. So he's living in the past, in the present and the future at the same time. I want you to catch that. Living in the past, the present and the future at the same time. Amen. So we must learn to fully be present today. Because there's so much gold, so much glory that God wants to release every single day. So therefore, a day feels like a thousand years because we go deep in the glory of God. We go deep in Jesus. So every day, there's so much and that's why we must enjoy the journey and not just think about the destination. We must enjoy the journey because there's so much every single day. New every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh God, new every morning, 
Every day is a gift from the Lord. Amen. But I've been ultra, ultra busy. And uh, and I'm so grateful. I'm here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We just finished an incredible three days conference. And in a few hours, I'm actually going to take our guests on a yacht cruise around Puerto Vallarta. It's going to be beautiful watching the sunset together in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, but I've been so busy, so busy, more, probably more busy than I would have liked to be, honestly. And I'm just kind of digressing or sharing my heart, but I've been a little too busy. And when I moved out of my home, and if you didn't know, I moved out of my home uh, on 31st of January. And now we moved into our new studio office space. Praise God for that. We moved into our new warehouse space so we could have more of a 24 seven headquarters in Orange County for our church and our ministry. But right now, I think Prophetess Ivana and Alana and some of our BAM fam, I believe some of you are moving into our warehouse space right now. So thank you, including Mama Lim. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. But I wish I was there. But hear me now. And I, I know I'm just kind of rambling, but those who have ears to hear, you're, you're one with me in the spirit. If you're hearing me, I want you to say amen. If you're catching this, I want you to say amen and give some hearts and likes. But as much as I wish I was there at home with the move, and I was hoping it would have happened in the month of January before my travels really increased and got busy. Because literally I'm scheduled to travel every week, every week, almost till the end of this year. Cray, cray, ain't that right? Cray, cray. And as much as I, I want to be there so I could, do it in the way that I want. But here's the thing. This is where we release and we trust God. And we have teams. I want you to say teams. We have teams. We have other members of the body to operate, to conduct, to administrate, to do the work of the ministry. Because I cannot be everywhere at the same time. Therefore, we have teams under the covering in the network, in the family. We have teams that are operating and moving forth the vision and the glory of God and the anointing of the Lord. So right now, our Open Heavens World BAMFAM team, they are moving into the studio right now. So I want to thank all of you. And I wish I was there, honestly, but I'm here in Puerto Vallarta because we all need to fulfill the vast vision. And the greater the dream, the greater the team work must be. The greater the dreams, the greater the teamwork must be. And if you're with me today, say amen. But today I want to talk about the arts of tearing. Amen. The arts of tearing. Praise God. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because I'm a revivalist. I want to see a move of God. I want to see God move. And I remember in 2021... I was doing a number of conferences, regional conferences, many different guest speakers. And I was not seeing the fruit that I wanted. Yes, it's fun to be in the glory with different friends of the gospel, anointed men and women of God, but it's a lot of work. And around springtime of 2021, I, I felt a shift in my ministry and in my life. And I felt like the Lord said, I want you to not, and that was then, this is now, this is a different season. But the Lord said, I want you to begin to do revivals, not with many different speakers or two, three different speakers, but just you, just you. Because if you look at the revivalists, the generals of old, they did not have 500 speakers on one panel. They did not have 20 speakers on one conference, 10. No, it was just one mantle. One genuine mantle that shook a region. Catherine Coleman, Pastor Benny Hinn, Reinhard Bonnke, uh, Amy Silva McPherson, William Brown, A.A. A. Allen, Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagan, Dr. Ronnie Howard Brown. They did not need a whole panel of different speakers. Yes, we love to see, we love to see unity. We love to see different uh, grace gifts operating together because then it's more dynamic, it's more eclectic. But the Lord began speaking to me saying, 
the old generals and revivalists, it was only one man, woman of God who broke it open and cracked it. And it's called camp meetings. Camp meetings. These camp meetings would be five days to seven days to two weeks. And these extended revivals have gone missing in the Western world. Because in the Western world, we always want cookie cutter. We want fast and easy. And I believe in short and sweet. Okay, I believe in powerful and concise. I believe that. Amen. Because time is of the essence. But it, what happened to extended revivals? What happened to moves of God? Like Toronto, Brownsville, Lakeland. What happened to extended revivals, moves of God in the United States and Western nations? But in 2021, the Lord said, Ben, I want you, you alone, honor and respect the grace, the mantle that's on your life. And you hit it. And guess what? Boom. We went into a three-month revival in Gallup, New Mexico, in the Navajo Nation. Three months. A four-day conference turned into three months of miracles, signs, wonders. The whole region was trans. It was so powerful. My goodness. And God's doing it again. But today, I want to talk about the art of tearing. Because we need to learn how to tarry in the spirit. We need to learn how to tarry until the glory falls. We need to learn how to press in in patience, long suffering, and endurance. We need to learn to stick to a word, to stick to God's power until the fire fall. We need to learn to tarry in the upper room until the baptism of fire fall. We need to learn to stay in that wine press, that threshing floor until the work is finished. And too many people will oust themselves. What does that mean? Too many people will prematurely leave a place. Now I'm preaching now. Too many people will prematurely let go of a word or a vision, prematurely surrender their position of authority that God has said, that God has spoken. And we need to learn to tarry. So let's go here, Luke 24, verse 49. Glory to God, Luke 24, 49. If you're with me today, say amen. Luke 24, 49, praise God. Shut and behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you. But stay, someone say stay. Stay in that city until, that's the prerequisite, until you're clothed with power from on high. Stay in that city. Stay under that anointing. Stay under that covering. Stay in that church, stay in that ministry until you receive a mantle, until you leave transfigured and transformed. Stay in that place until you're fully marinated. Stay in that cocoon until you're metamorphed into a butterfly. Stay in that place until you are fully different. And when you become a new creation, then you are able to release and to be released from that place. But too many of us want to run. We want to fly. We want to bounce off the walls like the Energizer Bunny. But we need to learn the art of tearing. T-A-R-R-Y. We need to learn the art of tearing. And what is tearing? Literally that word Terry, it is in the King James Version, the KJB, KJV. And what Terry means, it's more than just staying, okay? But what tearing means, it is an art and it's a realm of staying put in your position. Imagine this, imagine you have a role, a task, you've been appointed to be a watchman and you have the, the, the graveyard shift, let's say from 10 p.m. all the way to 5 a.m. And if you do not stay or tarry in that position in your allotted time, then you may 
forfeit the whole kingdom. Because in that window, say window, in that window, an enemy intruder may come. Somebody may come and you may miss out on what you were meant to catch and see. I'm preaching right now, friends. Because it's in that window, it's in that position. And you cannot forfeit it. But let me tell you, if you are in that graveyard shift at midnight hour, let's say from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., would you get tired? Most of them, they didn't even have coffee back then or Red Bull. <laughs> Would you get tired? Would you get sleepy? Absolutely. So you're tearing. You're keeping yourself awake, keeping yourself woke, energized, edified. You're keeping yourself uplifted and up so you can be alert. I prophesy you're going to be more alert than ever before. Your discernment will be sharper than ever before. I prophesy that you're going to be more awake and you're going to see and feel and discern and you're going to be sharper than ever before because that's what tearing does. You're not falling asleep when you tarry, but you're coming more and more alive, awake and active in the Holy Ghost. Alive, awake and active in Jesus' name. So when you're tearing, you're not just sitting there bored out of your mind. La, 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 la. No, you are praying in the spirit. You are pressing in the Holy Ghost. Hit a baba. You are uplifting the realms of God. You're building it up in the supernatural and you're doing something because your position is a position of power. Your position, hear me now. Your position is a position of expectation. You're not losing hope. You're not becoming weary. You're not becoming tired. You're not getting discouraged. You're not getting disappointed. But you're standing firm in that position, not just in the outward form, but in the inward parts in your heart. You are active in that position because you know that you cannot fall asleep. You cannot take it for granted. You cannot let go of it. You need to keep your eyes on the prize. You need to be focused, awake, and alert, and active. And that's what tearing means. The art of tearing. Too many people leave the oven before they're fully cooked. Uh, even this morning, Puerto Vallarta, we had fried chicken, delicious. Don't judge me. We had fried chicken for breakfast. And the pieces of chicken, they were, they were thick, they are fat. But as I bit into it, it tasted rubbery. And it was a little too pink. And this is five stars over at the Western. Amen. But as I bit into it, it tasted rubbery. And on the inside, it was too pink. And I knew they did not cook it thoroughly. Too many of us are leaving the oven before being fully cooked. And you are undercooked. You are undercooked. And God is saying, do not leave that place until God's done with your life. Do not leave that place until God is done releasing the glory on your life. Come on, some of you, you're happy with 20, 30%. You got a word, but God said, I want to deposit words. You're happy that you got a, a revelation or an impartation, but how deep is that impartation? You're in the oven and you're cooking and you're happy that it cooked halfway, but God wants to cook you all the way. He wants to, are, are you hearing me today? Because the Lord wants you to stay in that place, that specific place. Stay in Jerusalem. Amen. Stay in Jerusalem. Glory to God. In that city until you've been clothed with power from on high, until you've been transformed, until you're transfigured, until you cannot even recognize yourself. Those people around your family cannot even recognize yourself until. If you're leaving your prayer closet cussing like a sailor, then you better go back because God's not done with you yet. If you're leaving your prayer closet still discouraged and distressed and sad and, and, and you're, you're filled with doubt and anxiety, then you, gotta, you better go back because God's not done cooking you up yet in Jesus' name. So the art of tearing. And too many of us with our TikTok generation, we want now, we want fast food. Right now, fast, 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 now, now, now. We're entitled, we're grumpy, we get hangry. 
Rabbah, but God is saying stay until. And don't leave your post. Don't leave that place. Did God really say, leave that ministry? Did God really say, leave that church? Did God really say to leave that job? Did the Lord really say to divorce your husband, your wife, your spouse? Or was that your flesh? Stay in that place until you leave transformed. It's the art of tearing. And in America, and even in most places, but I'm just going to talk about America and the Western nations. Why are we not seeing extended revivals like in Brazil or in Asia, Africa? Why are we not seeing it? Because people have lost the art of tearing. And I know Terry is a King James word. It's an old King James English word. But tearing, what tearing means, it means to remain. Someone say remain. And that word in the Greek, terry, it means kathizo. I want you to say kathizo. What that word kathizo means, it means to make sit down. Does not the Bible say in Psalm 23, I will make you lie down in green pastures. Kathizo in the Greek, it means to make to sit down. Now imagine your child, or maybe you are a child, Ooh, child. Imagine your child is running around, causing a mess with all the toys. What do you do? You make them sit down. Sit down, boy. Sit down, girl. Sit down. And be quiet. Sit down. Face the wall. Otherwise, you might get more of a longer time out. All right, that's cathizo. You make to sit down. Stay in that place. Remain in that place until your attitude changes. Until your stinking thinking changes. Amen. So God wants us to remain, to sit, to be in a certain place until we're transformed. And too many people get offended because they didn't get blessed yet. Oh, I didn't get blessed yet, Dr. Ben. I didn't receive a word from the man of God. I didn't, I, I didn't get personally, to, oh, it's, it was never about you anyways. But if you stay long enough, the last will be the first. And the hungry will always be fed and will always receive. You may not receive in the first quarter, but what about the third and the fourth quarter? Listen, you may be behind in a football game, but until the fat lady sings and until it's over, don't throw in the towel yet. So cathizo means to make sit down. Sit down, it means to be seated. It means to stay. Someone say amen. Now when you study the word cathizo, this is a transitive word. I want you to say transitive, which means it's a word of transition. Okay, it's not a word of settlement. It's a word of transition. And the Lord is saying, when you remain, when you cathizo, when you sit and stay, when you tarry, it is for a transition. I want you to imagine this, a runner in a marathon. What would the runner do before ready, get set, go? Before bah, the gun goes off. The runner gets in position, gets focused until the gun shoots and now you take off. Are you in position? Are you in cathedral? Are you remaining, sitting, staying in that place until it's time? The art of tearing. Today I'm talking about the art of tearing because many of us are forfeiting our calls. We want things now. We want things fast. We're entitled. We leave things unfinished. I prophesy that you will move in the finishing anointing. I prophesy that you will finish your task. No matter how hard it is. How I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. Hey, honey child. Hey, boo child. I know it's difficult. But stay in that place. 
Long-suffering is a fruit of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to repeat that again. Long-suffering is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you are in the Lord, then you are long-suffering. In English vernacular, long-suffering means to be patient. Love is patient, long-suffering. It suffers and it expands and stretches its capacity to love. Because love will wait. Look at God. God loves us, so he waits for us to get our act together. For us to mature into that bride of Christ. He's waiting on us. We're not waiting for him. He's waiting on you. The art of tearing is missing in the church. When's the last time you went to a service that was five, six hours long? Like right now, I'm hearing reports of the Asbury University, or they're calling it the Asbury Revival in Kentucky, a historical Methodist school where different revivals have broken out at the Asbury University. And I'm sure many of you are seeing it on social media. Now the local news channels have caught wind of this Asbury revival. And I believe there's a genuine, I believe there's a genuine sense of revival there. But they have been in that building for over 55 hours straight. Morning, night, day, they're canceling classes. The elders are bringing in food and water for the students and for the attendees, for the people. But you have to learn to tarry. You have to learn to stay in that place, to wait, to press through, to break. You have to learn to tarry. Because whatever you tarry into, you will have an inheritance. Let me talk about it like this. Whatever you invest into, you will reap a great inheritance. Whatever you so invest into, you will reap a great inheritance. Now catch this. Imagine the first stockholders of Facebook. Or how about this? Because Facebook's going out of the toilet. But how about this? Imagine you were one of the first people to buy Bitcoin years ago. Bitcoin cryptocurrency. And then boom, it just shot up. It literally went from $20, $30, hundreds of dollars. And boom, Bitcoin shot up over 30K. My goodness, what, a year and a half ago? How high did it go? It went over, what, 50, 60K? And imagine if you were one of the first investors of Bitcoin. But hear me now. But you pulled out. I know a number of people who have pulled out too early. But they pulled out and they did not get as much as they could have if they stayed. If they tarried. Are you offended that someone rebuked you? Are you offended that someone corrected you? So now you want to run away, go home to your daddy, go home to your mommy and suck on your thumb. Are you offended or are you going to tarry in that place? Die to self, carry your cross, bear your cross. Are you going to say, you know what? When I first invested into this Bitcoin, I knew that this was going to be the future. So even though there's times of difficulty, I'm going to keep my investment or at least a part of it. I'm going to keep my investments there because I know it's going to reap a greater war. But you could tarry and reap a greater harvest or you could pull out whenever you'd like. And the Lord is saying, those who learn to tarry will reap the fullness of God's kingdom rewards. Those who learn to, hear me now, those who learn to tarry in the spirit, because tearing is spiritual. It is an art. It's a realm of revival. Those who learn to tarry, they will reap a greater harvest of revival. Have we lost the art of tearing? Oh, I don't feel it. Well, you pray until you feel it. Oh, uh, after two, three hours, I'm not feeling it. You press in. You press in. You break through. Someone say amen. 
Even the other day. Even the other day, there was somebody, they didn't get their blessing or they didn't get their breakthrough. But boom, on the third day, fire of God fell and it received what they came for. Don't call it quits, friends. Do not give up your inheritance for a bowl of soup. You may not see it yet. You may not, you may not have experience yet, but stay the course. Press in. Learn to tarry. Because those who endure to the end will be saved. Those who endure to the end will be saved. The art of tearing. And why am I sharing? Why did I share about this Asbury revival in Kentucky? Like I said, I, I do believe that there's a genuine spirit of revival that's breaking out in that university college campus. Because they're tearing with their time. They're tearing, staying, sitting until they receive the power that's from on high. Let me read that verse one more time. Amen. If you're with me today, say amen. Aha. Uh -huh. Cathizo in Luke 24, 49. And behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you. But stay in that city. Until, say until, until you are clothed with power from on high. Until you're clothed with that double portion. Stay in that place until you see the fire, the glory, the miracle. Stay in that meeting. Stay under that covering. Stay in that church, that ministry, in that job place. I know you're getting persecuted. I know you're getting slapped and tossed around like a... Stay in that place until something breaks. Stay in that place, remain, tarry until you are clothed with power from on high. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Ra -ba 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 -ba. Don't leave until you go back with what you came for. Do not leave the same. Do not leave the same way you came in. Do not, I refuse to go in the same. And to leave the same way I came in. I refuse. You need to have that tenacity. Like a bulldog that's gripping the bone in its mouth. And I'm not going to let go until I leave with power from on high. Someone say, I'm leaving with power. Someone say, I'm leaving clothed with power. There must be a change. A transfiguration. There must be a metamorphosis. There must be a shift. And stay, remain, tarry until you leave with a mantle. Until you leave fully different as a new creator. Until you leave. Come on, somebody. Do not leave prematurely. Do not oust out in the flesh or in your offense. If God called you there, stay there. And that's, 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 that's it. Goes back to that. People do not believe. If you love me, you'll obey me. People really don't love God. If you love the Lord, you'll obey. What did Jesus say? I'm going to send you the promise of my daddy. But you must stay in the city until you've been clothed. That's the real question. Do you really love God? Do you love the Lord that you're willing to wait? Do you love God that you're willing to stay, to remain? Do you love God so much that you believe in his words and what he said? That even though you're not seeing it, you're not feeling it, it's not happening. But you know because he said it and because you love him, you're going to stay in that place. You're going to be faithful. You're going to remain pure. You're going to be that spotless, wise virgin until that day comes. And God is saying, stay, remain. Until you're clothed. Shit, I am ready to leave with a new mantle, with a new garment. Amen. Why? Because in that process of tearing, you become broken. And you become broken. And you, it's, it's like the process of death. Like a caterpillar that goes into the cocoon. While it's in the cocoon, 
it dies. And now those processes beginning to transform into a whole new creation. And that's what tearing does. The art, the realm of tearing, it breaks you down. It kills your pride. It molts your old frame as an eagle. And it causes you to manifest afresh with power. So I'm going to say power. The art of tearing. But too many of us want fast results, fast blessings, instant coffee, instant noodles. Now, now, now. Now, now, now. Revival is now. But if you want to see a greater realm of revival, you must learn to tarry. If you want to see greater promotion, you must learn to tarry. Stay, sit, stay put, remain. Rabab, don't leave your post. Don't leave your position. Especially if God said, if the Lord said, then remain. Jesus. And I believe the art of tearing is returning back to the church. There's an old phrase that says push. What is push? Pray until something happens. Stay in that place until something happens. And let me tell you, usually the greatest miracles happen at the end, the 11th hour. Usually the greatest manifestations of God's power happens at the end. That's just how he does it. That's how God does it. Amen. When you least expect it. And so many people have forfeited, surrendered, and given up right before their greatest breakthrough. Right before God releases that million dollar, multi-million dollar contract. Right before that greater glory falls. A lot of people will for Do you know why? Because God is testing the hearts of his people. Can you wait in trust? Can you wait in worship? Can you tarry in love? Can you remain and sit and be seated in surrender? Somebody say hallelujah. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to work. Ship you and I long to worship you. Otherwise, you may have an Ishmael. How many Ishmaels do you have? How many Ishmaels do you have? How many Ishmaels do you have? Lift up your hands, church. Lord, I thank you. Touch your people. Jesus, touch your people. Shama rabosa karabrata. Touch your people, oh God, I pray. Let me tell you, this is the best my voice has sounded in the last two months. In the last two months, since Hawaii in December to now. This is the best that my voice has sounded in the last two months. You know why? It's because God is strengthening his church. And he is strengthening the voice of his prophets, of his prophetic people. There is a release of the glory of God that's coming right now. And you and I, we must learn the art of tearing. 
pressing in, staying, remaining in that place under that glory, under that water spout until the fire and the glory of God falls and comes. I'm telling you, church, we are in a season right now where God is saying, get ready for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Get ready for an outlandish move of God. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has fathomed what God's about to do, but we must stay in that place until the fire and the glory of God falls. Someone say amen. I see Prophet Lovi in the house. God bless you, man of God. Shalom to you, sir. What an honor to have you, sir. But we must learn to stay, to tarry in that place until God finishes the work, until God finishes what he's called you to do. I declare and I decree right now that the power of God's coming upon you. He's going to encourage you, strengthen you. That word is going to quicken you. It's going to quicken your spirit so that you will remain and stay in that place, in that lane, in that realm until you leave fully changed, until you leave fully trapped, until you leave fully transfigured in the glory of God. Jesus said, stay in that city until you're clothed with power from on high. Someone say power. Until you are clothed with power from on high. In the name of Jesus. If you receive it, say amen. If you receive it, say hallelujah. I declare right now, the arts of tearing is coming back to the church. Who? Oh, why? What happens? Because when you tarry in the glory, there will be a tearing apart of the old. I just heard the Lord say, when you tarry in the spirit, he begins to tear off the old, tear off the soulish things, the old mantles, definitions, the old armor of soul begins to get torn off. When you tarry, things are torn off of your lives. Somebody say amen. And I declare right now, there is a tearing of the old. There is a tearing of the old, my goodness. There is a tearing of the old and there is a tearing off of the false in Jesus name. Because that's what happens when you tarry in the glory. The old falls off. The dead falls off. Shikarabah, the counterfeits fall off. When you're tearing in the presence, the old you dies and the new you resurrects. If you receive it, say amen. Somebody say fire. My goodness. Someone say fire. Let me tell you, people of God, we just had a man of God jump onto this broadcast. Dr. Prophet Lovi Elias. Now that was a sign in Jesus' name. Let me tell you, friends, get ready for signs, wonders, and miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm talking to you. Get ready for signs, wonders, and miracles. Shoo. Signs, wonders, and miracles to come upon your life. Someone say amen. I declare and I decree right now that as you tarry into the Lord, there's going to be a tearing off and a tearing down of the old, of the dead, and of the flesh in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Tearing in the presence. Tearing in the glory. Staying, sitting, remaining, sitting put. Jesus. Staying put until God clothes you from on high. Are you ready to walk out with a new garment of glory? Are you ready to leave this place, this season? with a new mantle. If that's you, say amen. Lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you for our friends here today. Release the power of God, the fire of God, and the glory of God. The fire, the power, and the glory to come upon your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stay in that place until the glory falls, until the fire falls. Stay in that place until the visitation of heaven comes upon your life. Someone say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. If you're with me today, say amen. 
If you're receiving today, say hallelujah. It's the art of tearing, my friends. Some things do not come quickly. And in fact, if I'm going to receive... In fact, here's the Bible. Let me give you Bible right here. Let me give you Bible right here. Amen. Haha, ha ba 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 Are you enjoying this? And by the way, it's good to see all of you. I've missed you. I love you. It's good to be back. I've been very busy starting off this new year. Proverbs 13, 11. Wealth gained quickly will dwindle. Wealth gained quickly will dwindle. But whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Whoever gathers little by little will increase. Wealth gained quickly will dwindle. I don't want a blessing if I did not pay the price. Even King David said, I do not want to give the Lord a thing unless it costed me. Wealth gained quickly will dwindle. I don't want a following. I don't want... I don't want an anointing that did not cost me. I, did, I do not want a gift, a blessing that I did not have to work for, that I did not have to pay the price for. Someone say amen. And thank you, Marina, for being a subscriber. But wealth gained quickly will dwindle. And I believe, friends, God is saying, Terry, because there's a greater glory, there's a higher measure, there's an increase that God wants to release. And if you want the greater, it's not going to come quickly. If you want the greater, Terry. If you want the more, Terry. If you want the next, Terry. Otherwise, Uh-huh, that's right. Otherwise, get the lower level. Someone say hallelujah. Rabababosata. If this word today blessed you, I want you to say amen. If you enjoyed this broadcast today, I want you to say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Please consider sharing this on your wall. And do give this page a like and a follow. You can follow me on different social media platforms. So uh, on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Good to see a Prophet Luis. Good to see a Melissa Filler. Good to see you, many friends. Milagre, good to see you. Apostle Robert, Leticia, Crystal, Sherry. Amen. DC and Solera. I was wondering how Solera's eyes have been since our meetings. Becky Weaver. But I want to say I've missed you. It's been some time. I've been extremely, extremely busy. Thank you for all your love and prayers. I'm live here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Amen. Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And even today, we had the sudden visit on this broadcast by the man of God, Dr. Prophet Lovi. What a surprise blessing. Amen. For his presence to be on in our broadcast today. Well, friends, listen, this is a very prophetic month. February is a very prophetic month, and, and we must pray for Turkey and Syria. Of course, you already know that I've prophesied about the two E's in the beginning of this year. I prophesied about the earthquakes and the eruptions. And of course, in Turkey, Syria, there was a very large earthquake. Now they're counting 25,000 deaths. The largest catastrophe, I think, in the last decade, okay? The largest humanitarian catastrophe, natural disaster on earth in the last decade or so. But uh, we must pray. We must pray. And uh, I want to tell you that this Monday, I'm doing a free Zoom webinar. Free Zoom webinar called Unlocking 
prophetic mysteries. Unlocking prophet because this is a very prophetic month. The month of February is a very prophetic month. Okay, this is a month of prophetic love. This is the month of the prophets. Why? Because true prophets are revelators of love. And how do you gain and grow in revelation through love? By being like Apostle John, the rev revelator of love. So our Zoom webinar is at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard. All of our Zoom webinars are now free. And uh, I'm going to be broadcasting live here from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. It's my last day of, I guess, vacation in a sense. But of course, I'll be ministering and releasing impartation, teaching, and the glory of God. Good to see Evangelist Carey. But uh, Providence Alana, if we can get the link posted so I could pin it to the top. But this Monday, I want to invite you. And yes, that's going to be, what is that? It's going to be February 13th. February 13th. I want to invite you to our free Zoom webinar on unlocking prophetic mysteries. I'm going to talk to you about moving in the realm of revelation and opening, unlocking the mysterion, the mystery realm of God, and really how to move and operate in a realm of continual revelation where the water spout continues to pour out over your life. Amen. Because the Lord does not want you dry. The Lord wants you wet. The Lord wants you overflowing in the grace, in the glory of God. Amen. And like I said, this month is a very prophetic month. The month of February is a very prophetic month. So I want to invite all of you to join a free Zoom webinar as I talk about unlocking prophetic mysteries. And that's going to be this Monday, February 13th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. And as I'm about to close, my friends, I want to say I love you. It's good to see all of you. Even before I got on the phone, excuse me, even before I got on Facebook Live today, I got off the phone with a man of God in Brazil. And now the door has opened for the nation of Brazil, which I'm very excited about because I've been praying into Brazil and America do Sur, South America for many years. So now is the time, my friends. Now is the time. Someone say amen. Well, bless you, friends. Do consider giving this video a like and a share. Tag somebody. Give this page a follow. And also follow me on different social media platforms. God bless you, friends. Shalom. I'll see you soon. Hasta pronto. From Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Dios te bendiga. Fuego de Dios.